Hey guys, welcome back to Bronson's Math Club. Today we'll be learning how to find the square root of whole numbers. So to begin with, what exactly is the square root? Well, a square root is basically when you take a number and multiply it by itself to get your product. And then the product, you could say that is the square root of the number that you multiplied. So to further explain what I'm trying to say here is, let's go ahead and do an example. So let's say that we have the number 2. So if I were to multiply 2 by itself, i do 2 times 2 to get 4. I can write this as 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So 4 is to the square root is 2, okay? So this is what I'm trying to say when I define square root. So four, the square root of 4 is equal to 2 because 2 times 2 is equal to 4, okay? So now, I know that 2 times 2 is 4, but what exactly, how did I get 2? Well, here is a whole logical explanation on this. So let's go ahead and keep the same number, okay, same example. So we still have the square root of 4. Now, first of all, this symbol here, the square root symbol, is also known as a radical. This is equal to 1 half. So this radical symbol, let me actually rewrite this. Okay, so the radical symbol is equal to 1 half. So the square root of 4, I can also write this as, in parentheses, 4 to the power of 1 half, okay? So this is the same thing as for the square root of 4. Now, the next step that I have to do is find the factors of the number 4 in parentheses, okay? So in order to find the factors, I'm going to go ahead and do my factor chart. I don't know how, like there's different methods of finding factors. This is the way I like to do it. So go ahead and write 4 and now start with the smallest number that 4 is it can equally go into. So let's start with 2. So 2 times 2 it gives us 4. And then once again we'll use 2 because 2 times 1 gives us 2. So the factors of 4 are 2 and 2. Now we can repl replace the 4 with 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 half. Now next thing that we have to do we have to find what the power is of each of these numbers, okay, of the um, factors of 4, okay, which is 2 and 2. Well, if there isn't any power written, that means it's simply to the power of 1, because any number to the power of 1 is that number. So 2 to the power of 1 is really 2, okay? Now, since the base is the same, both of these have the base of 2, we can add the powers together. So if we were to add 1 and 1, we would get 2 to the power of 2, and then to the power of 1 half. Now here, notice that I said 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 1 half. That is, I have a power to the power of, a power to the power of, okay? That might sound confusing, but I have a power and then I have another power over here. When that's the case, you can multiply the powers. So if I have 2 to the power of 2 and then to the power of 1 half, I can multiply 2 and 1 half. So if I go ahead and do that here, 2 times 1 half, 2's cancel out and we're left with 1. So basically we only have 2 to the power of 1 or simply 2 as our answer. So that is how we got the 2 here. So if we were to go ahead and multiply 2 twice, so 2 times 2, we'd get 4 and that is the square root of 4. So four, the square root of 4 is 2 and that is how we got get it. Now I know that this whole reasoning or logical explanation, I guess, might seem a little confusing, but if you go ahead and practice, then it's really simple. So let's go ahead and do another example. Let's, this time let's go ahead and do the number, let's say 24, okay? So the square root of 24. Remember, the first step, since we know that the radical is equal to 1 half, we can write this as, in parentheses, 24 and then to the power of 1 half. Step 2, find the factors of 24. So if we go ahead and find the factors over here, write 24, and then 2 is the smallest number that we can go with, so 2, so 2 times 12 is 24. Again, we can use 2 because 2 times 6 is 12, and then again 2 because 2 times 3 is 6, and this time we cannot use 2, so we'll move on to the next smallest number, which is 3, and 3 is divisible with 3, of course, and we get 1. So the factors of 24 are 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 
to the power of one half. Now this is very long, okay? So what we can do is let's go ahead and just pair them, okay? So if we have two same numbers, let's pair them. So two times two, we can also write this as two to the power of two because remember, they have each of them is to the power of one. Since the base is the same, we can add the powers together. So two to the power of two. Now we have third two, but there isn't any other two to pair this with. So we can just simply multiply two and three to get six, okay? Because we just, we're just trying to simplify it, okay? And then we can write this as one half, to the power of one half, okay? Next step. Now what we have to do here, we can also use what I guess is part of the distributive property of multiplication. We can rewrite this by separating them. So well, what I'm trying to say is we can also write this as 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 1 half times 6 to the power of 1 half. And this is the same thing, okay? I'm just distributing them, okay? So into two parts. And the reason I did that here is because notice here that again we have a power to the power of so this just gives us a chance to simplify so two and two cancel each other out so we're left with one so two to the power of one which is the same thing as two and then times six to the power of one half which i can also write this as two and then six to the power of one half which is also the same thing because remember this is to the power of one half is really what the radical meant. So that is, I can write this in, in the square root form. So I can write this as two and then the square root of six. So this is how we find the, I guess the square root of 24. So what I'm trying to say here is remember, if we refer to the first example, what we had done when we found our answer, we multiplied it right by itself two times two to get four. We have to do the same thing here but this time it might, well, stay with me, okay? It's not really that hard, just need to pay attention. So we have to multiply here two and then the square root of six by itself. So we'll multiply it by two and then the square root of six. Now this is kind of complicated and I'm not even sure if I know how to multiply it like this. That's why I'm gonna change it to a form I do know how to multiply. So remember the radical meant one half, right? So I can rewrite this as two and then six to the power of one half times two, six to the power of one half. Now what you need to do here, you're gonna multiply it, I guess, directly. So you're gonna multiply two by the two and then the six into the power of one half by six to the power of one half. So two times two is gonna give us four. And then since the base is the same, we both have, we have six here, right? We can add the powers. So one half plus one half is one. So we can write this as six to the power of one or simply four and then in parentheses six. And four times six gives us 24, which matches our answer. So the square root of 24 is right over here. Two and then six, the square root of six, okay? So I know this is a lot of information to take in, but it's really kind of basic. I'll remember the steps. So just to kind of review, first thing that you have to do is change it into this form, I guess, to the power of one half. Step two, find the factors of the number in the parentheses, okay? Step three is that you can try to simplify them, okay, if necessary. Step four is you can use the distributive property so that you can separate them so that you can, if you have any power to the power of, so you can simplify those and that way you'll get your final answer. And to check, you can always multiply it twice. So when you have this case, remember you're multiplying it directly, so two by the two or whatever the number is outside, and then the the square roots and you get your answer okay so that's all there is to this video i really hope you guys understood this but if you still need some practice problems then please go ahead and visit our website at bronzesmathclub.com and we'll see you guys next time bye